Hello and welcome back to the 2022 Las Vegas Challenge presented by Innova Discs. We've got nine holes to go. The final round, Gannon Burr, can he hang on at the Disc Golf Pro Tour? You're watching Jomez Pro, Ooh. Nate Sexton, Jeremy Colling, and Paul Uliberry. And if these next nine holes are as good as the first nine holes, we are in for a treat, folks. Gannon Burr bouncing back. I'm not going to say a slow start. He had the spit out on five and he recovered by going five down the next four holes. Drew Gibson, nothing flashy, just eight down the front nine. At this point, Eagles not necessarily 100% in it, it seems like, but we've got some drama brewing with chase card action and other cards in the course. Calvin Heinberg out there blistering the course. Adam Hammes just birdies the first nine. No big deal. Wow. Hole 10, par 4, it's a gimme for these guys. 721, <laughs> <laughs> if we're judging it by the front nine. All jokes aside, you're going to want to put this through kind of a tight gap off the yeah. tee. And a tricky upshot, even though these guys are going to be throwing slow putter approaches, is what I'm guessing. That's fantastic. Yeah. This is, this is the one hole where you have a tight gap, and it, it's a little nervy. Everything else is just kind of wide open, hit your angle, and you're fine. It's weird to play a technical hole like this when 30 feet off the tee. Oh, my gosh. Look at this look at saucer. This hovercraft. No way. That was four inches off the ground and went 500 feet. <laughs> but, yeah, you're playing this technical hole, but you're 45 feet off the tee, and there's not another tree I think for if, the next two holes. Totally. I think if Drew threw the... A disc, whatever that thing is. Yeah, the destroyer, the atomic bomb. He could flip it up past the bunker, use that as a power booster, and like, <laughs> no, for real. I'm visualizing it and like <laughs> scoot it up there to the green. Kind of like how like spaceships use the moon's gravity to create more velocity or however that works. No, I'm just talking about like it just barely clears and then like a, a bicycle guy would just like boost like a power booster yeah yeah, yeah like, i got you yeah like a power boost absolutely all right gannon now coming in with angle on this hillside can be scary but that looks like perfect touch wow bullseye well how is he gonna make a putt outside the circle if he puts it close like that he is unflappable right now Eagle semi flappable. Yeah, and who would have thought? Mm, it's it's a weird thing to see, but I mean still twenty seven under par is is no slouch. I mean, coming in <clears throat> to the last two rounds, the two players who are the most decorated mm. in Calvin and Eagle, you would expect one of those two to kind of pull away. Right. Calvin yesterday struggled on the green, wasn't able to do it, and so far eagle not able to do it so surprising these young talented players are putting the pressure on them and it's fun to watch these approaches were top notch eagle has a little bit of work left edge of circle downhill putt that's pure not the super excited face because he knows that he's out of the hunt for the win now but Still trying to claw up points and have a scrap up a decent finish. Drew is in. And Drew's used to this position as well. I mean, he has been absolutely on a shred festival the last mm -hmm. year and a few months. I mean, USDGC, he made a deep run. Seems like he was on the lead card of every tournament that we watch, throwing it in, making ESPN over there at the Ledgestone. I mean, he's used to the crowd. He's used to this type of pressure. All eyes on Gannon right now. Yeah, I mean, we, we uh, another star frame here for our lead group as we go up to 11, par three, 369 feet. This is averaging a half stroke below par and it feels bad to not give yourself a birdie look. A lot of that tall grass that has been on this hole in the years past is now gone. Backhand, mid-range, and forehand are the two most 
common options. There is OB left and long. And that'll be slightly low ceiling, about 27 feet. <laughs> Just couldn't throw it more casual. Or better. Oh <laughs> my <laughs> goodness. That's Beautiful disgusting. Shot. Okay. Watch the watch the, the He like didn't so do smooth. anything. It's just, he did nothing. Do do less. Pop up. It, it looks like a person throwing two twenty. Like you just this the cadence. I can't get over it. I love it. <laughs> it's this booth is a bunch of sidearm thrown fools, and we are all in amazement of that form. For sure, this is turning. Okay, not great. Now, Drew, two back, Gannon, closer. This could be a tough spot. Drifting. Saw Eagle go Heiser in the last round. Goes with a straight shot there. I have a tricky butt. With that ceiling, that is almost an unmakeable putt unless you're really putting a ton of spin. Drew style, not the nose up spin that, that would really be necessary for that, that opening he had. A huge opportunity for Gannon. Picking up a third stroke would really give him some comfort here. Man, what a delivery. And just seven down in the last six. He's playing like he's done this for years. Like, we, like, Maybe we, maybe he has. We just haven't seen it in coverage. Like he's just in Iowa, just birdie and nine in a row against people at C tiers. That's unreal. <laughs> Are we counting that? Oh yeah, Simon, you're clear to putt. You're watching Jonas Pro, the putting game. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, it's possible, but so unlikely. Oh! This time, we're gonna pay him a little extra. Maybe we're just not good enough. Simon making no. the putt! Zero makes? Zero makes, this is not possible. <laughs> what are you talking about, two in a row? Oh, oh my god! Are you joking? That's jail! How, how'd you get out of jail? Thank you. <laughs> I'll clear the basket for you guys. That was one of my favorite ones. Look forward to that one in one week, the season finale of Joma's Pro Putting Game. That was a lot of fun to work on last year. Hole 12, par three, 396. Almost blind from the tee. You're going down the right side of the fairway with some OB along that right side as well. Keep it flat, get the weight of the shot right, and look for that skip finish. Going with a little bit of flex. It's a good, good idea to keep it away from the hillside. Doesn't really have the energy, but this oh, is a Oh boy. <gasps> I th oh, wow. I think at the end of the day, that roll is good. Oh, yeah? I mean, I think it's, I mean, certainly well, you don't want it to roll. get that close yeah. to the out of bounds, but right. it, he got closer to the basket with that. Okay. Tristan's delivery, man. When this dude puts it all together, we, we are all in for a very exciting show. Because he is a smooth operator. Very fun to see him playing healthy. Yes. Smooth operator number one right here. <laughs> All right. This is going to be a good roll. Yeah. And Drew's got to be thinking to himself, oh, okay, I'm, I've had two pars today. I'm, I've played 11 holes. I've gained zero strokes. What? That's got to be pretty frustrating. I mean, what else can he do? Yeah. Wow, Eagle just over the top parked. I think also on that note, Jeremy's he's also probably just in a zone and not even mm. thinking about scores. I, mean, I would imagine that yeah. he's just like 
going through the motions and if you and if you do stop and think about it he's probably like well i'm playing good finally ganon does miss on online though i mean that's no easy putt looked like the flag was yeah. moving a little bit low limbs definitely not an easy putt at all i mean if he makes that we're all very impressed but at the same time not impressed because he has been making those putts all weekend but that 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 putt just randomly occurs on your card you're like dang that was a sick putt yeah. but but he's just making him seem so routine at this point that it's hard to be surprised by it anymore but he will take the only part of the group on the challenging old 12 and drew keeps it within two 13 par three 387 slightly uphill same people go with the power spike hyzer over the trees on the right some people are going to try to go underneath the low hanging limbs on the right to skip it there is a bunker guarding everything which is what everybody's afraid of if you don't land in there make sure you don't hyzer out to the left there is out of bounds pretty far left though this is the second hardest hole on the course as Tristan has gotten a horrible roll and that is out of bounds 50 feet away. It's actually pretty close right there. I thought it was a bit farther. Is it closer than 50? No, Might he's be. just saying oh. he's saying the OB is a little tighter oh, than yeah. he thought. And Drew's in the bunker and he's going to have just inside the circle putt for the par. I think that was perfect and he caught the little... Yeah, the last yep. thing the low hanging um, limbs there and on the willow. Yeah, it looked like he had good weight. I agree. This has got to be one of the easiest shots for Eagle. I, I've never seen him really mess it up as far mm -hmm. as like too much hyzer like Tristan to catch the skip. It's always just spiking. Because Eagle throws so overstable by the time he gets it up there in the up in the sky. I mean, it's, it's coming down with angle that won't allow the skip. This is Look at this, Gannon. Knowing that Drew's out of bounds, I think he would probably game plan it this this way anyways, but playing the short layup. Yeah, he, he laid it up uh, yes, mm -hmm. or two days ago. Mm -hmm. But this isn't necessarily the easiest approach. He's got to clear that bunker and also put the brakes on. And perfect. Ooh, yeah. Tristan and his Gary Player Sunday all black outfit. Looking sharp. Playing so well this week. Big putt here for Drew. Cannot afford to lose another stroke. Holds the balance. Clutch. Huge. The game is so fun when you putt well. You know, Drew in this last offseason, too, just took up golfing and decided to become a scratch golfer in, like, under a year. Do you know that? Yeah. That's crazy. It's insane. That's how talented he is at... at all things and then we're watching him just come onto the pro tour disc golf scene and just want, shred putts as well and then in his off time he's just like oh, i'll take up golfing and i'm good at that i want to see him nuke a golf ball i can only imagine that dude gets around on a swing and that ball goes bye bye well 14 would you guys agree probably the easiest hole remaining Mm -hmm. for our players today not that it's that easy but with their their power i think this sets up for some Pretty short birdie putts. After that, the last four, you have to earn them all. Drew going high with the Atomic Destroyer. Just a position shot. There is out of bounds on the right side. So if he tries to go big distance there, there is that tiny risk that he turns it over and suffers an out of bounds stroke. And maybe the green. This yeah, is this is bad. You don't want to be this far left. 
This is actually pushing towards out of bounds. I think it is. I think it's out of bounds. Oh, yeah. oh wow. Man. That is a blatant error. Again, giving it a nice touch of Anheuser angle out of the hand. Very good. on who's throwing first in this group i think cannon yeah gannon should be right around the 330 mark or so going high trying to stall it into the hillside oh yes wow lawn darts and jump putts man he's doing it all and game planning. That's a huge part of it as well. And he's game planning phenomenally. I'm already starting to think ahead to 17. Mm -hmm. Where oh, we right. saw Gannon go forehand mm -hmm. in round two playing for the three. I was a little bit confused about it then. I don't know if it's something about that hole specifically that he's uncomfortable with. But for me, that looms large. The way the way the scores look right now, that's a that's as Drew Gibson as mm -hmm. a whole can get. Right. Well, obviously, a lot of stuff can happen between now and then. But well, he, my he, mind can't help but jump forward a little bit to that strategy play. As these guys approach here on fourteen, Drew is coming up short. That's not great. That's a low ceiling uphill yeah, putt. Not great at all. And he'll be first to putt. This is super important. And that oh that could no. be out of <gasps> wow. Oh. Okay, that is so lucky. I've never seen one air ball and stay in bounds there. Yeah, that is really lucky. Mm. See, even off the chains, he almost goes out of bounds. Must make. Clutch factor. I mean, that was pure. But I mean, now it, the ball is in Gannon's court. I mean, there's mm. there's four holes to play. And he is, what, 15 feet away yeah. for, the, for the birdie? I mean, it's counted. Tapping. Counted. He's parked. So that game plan on 17, I mean, if if Drew doesn't do something remarkable before we get to 17. Oh, man. No, you're totally right. I mean, I I fully expected them both to birdie this hole after right. I saw their drives. I was already sort of getting ahead of myself, and that's golf for you. Sometimes it seems like these guys could never miss a shot. Drew shows us he is still human in this moment and kind of leaves that up shot. That's a very, very simple shot for him. A little bit left. Fortunate, like Yuli said, that putt was really bad to miss in that situation with the air ball. On to 15, 439 foot par three. Out of bounds, not a huge factor here. There is out of bounds on both sides, but I don't expect it to come into play for this group. It's just about getting your shape right, getting your angle right, because it's a long way, slightly blind over on the right side. And there's the right height. Once he gets that height right, man, that thing zips. Yeah, it does. Look at that action. And that's way closer than he was the other day when he birdied this hole. Yes, it is. See if that tree's any factor at all. Can be annoying being right between right side, left side, low ceiling. Oh, he looked like he actually threw that one. And it's moving right. Wow. Right in the same spot almost. Wow. Back to back. Those guys are going to be what? 38, 39. Yeah. Somewhere in that. Yeah. I would say between 40 and 45 is probably accurate, but may, maybe a little bit closer. You're right. Roller from Drew. Look how smooth that was. And this is on the great line. Missed the tree. Yeah. Oh, perfect. oh, wow. off the bricks. Oh, boy. Perfect shot. 
the roll. He, he hasn't had a lot of opportunity to go to the roller, but every time we've seen it, I mean, yesterday with that phenomenal roller. Check this out. Left handed. You got to do whatever you can to have fun. I mean, I think that that might be a viable golf play for Eagle, but he needs to do something to have fun at this point. I mean, it's not fun for a player of his caliber to not be in the hunt to win at the end of the event. And I don't care about tour points and stuff like that. It's the first event of the season. He's got to do something to enjoy himself. And so I don't blame him going lefty there. Yeah, a little something for the crowd too. Mm hmm These tour points are important for, for most of the field. I mean, it's you, you think about grinding out every single putt that you can. This, oh, over the top. Did that get into the bushes? That looked like it went pretty uh, far. That becomes interesting. Drew being 15 feet away for the birdie. Yeah, I mean, where is Gannon? That's what I need to see. Well, hold on a second. Ew. How far is that? Uh, oh, okay. 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 Yeah. Not too bad. All right. It's Good. a little testy. Yeah. yeah. yeah sure. it's, with yeah. those limbs right in your stroke, that's never easy, even if you're 10 feet. It looked like it might have been 10 feet worse than that to right. me at first when he blew past it. So wasn't as bad as I feared. Able to save it, though he will... Give back the shot he just earned. And that's exactly the result that Drew needed right now. No time to waste in collecting these strokes, and he is able to get back within two. Heading into the incredibly challenging par four, hole 16, 880 feet, 88 feet, excuse me, this one, you don't, it looks like a tight gap off the tee, but it's really not that difficult to hit the gap. It's really about putting yourself in your comfortable approach range. For these guys, they're looking to get somewhere around that 400 foot range to the pin. 450 to 500 off the tee, and they're gonna be in that spot that they like. You know, this is going a distance. Yeah. Yacht. Yacht. Absolute yacht. At this point, Gannon gets a birdie on any of these last three holes. You gotta like his chances. I mean, yeah, you like him. Because these are the hardest holes. I like them if he you, just pars. Yeah, you like them if he pars. This might be out of bounds. Oh, good straight skip? No, it's <laughs> so long that I think it's safe. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he just beat the corner where that where that sidewalk comes in for us old guys. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> All right, so Drew... Needing it, having the best drive in the group, probably going to be in that 380 range. Gannon getting aggressive. Is this going to hold on long enough? It's a little early. Oh, and that's in the no putt zone. There's a low hanging branch or a tree that's just in the way. You, there's no look. You think no look? It's essentially no look. I mean, the, 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 what you'd have to do is throw an air bounce putt. Yeah. Or just hang some big high stall hyzer, and I don't know if there's enough airspace up there. Is Eagle stuck in the tree here? But do, I don't see an out, out of bounds ticker. I think he's. Yeah, I think he may have gotten away with one. This is. Left as well, looks like. Yeah, kind of similar. Yeah. Yeah, that's even more low ceiling. Okay, so. Drew, seeing where Gannon's approaches, knows that the door is getting more open, potentially, and this is looking like what you want. 
Very good. Coming in flat on the hillside, straight skip on the right side of the tree, hanging <laughs> cannon out to dry there. It's incredible to me, incredible to me that he can have that much power and then just kind of slow the arm and really spin mm. the disc, take the, you know, really down tempo that those kind of shots and have that much accuracy. Oh, so, oh. no. Cannon gives it a little bit. He didn't have to do that. I do, why do you do these things? <laughs> okay, so he's going to have to come through with another clutch par save. I, I can't fault him. I mean, I think he's been making everything. The yeah. basket's got to look huge to him. Yeah, but you hit the basket. There's a green right there. Sure. I, I, and you have to go high. The basket's smaller when you have to go high to to drop like that. I don't, I don't know. Drew, big he, moment. He needs this. <gasps> He's made everything oh, no. to that point. Okay. That makes this put a little oh, easier. Oh, yeah, it does. I mean, Ooh. Drew makes that. I wonder if that creeps into the psyche of Gannon going into that par save. But that's not what happened. So no strokes gained or lost for anyone on this card. So Drew will be throwing before Gannon, correct? First. Yes. Okay, so he's going to set set the bar here on 17. I am really eager to see how Gannon plays this. After going forehand, say Drew parks it. What, what does Gannon do? Focus. Get rid of any of those pressure thoughts and really center yourself, like where you're at and the shot you're throwing. I'm trying to just really let everything besides the basket bleed away. Here it is, hole 17, par three, 457. Out of bounds down that left side the entire way. No OB on the right, but some tricky situations if you get way back in those trees. This is one of the most important tee shots Drew Gibson's ever thrown. If, it's, if there's anything errant about it, game's over. Gannon can throw a sidearm off the tee. And think about it with this shot as it's perfect. Yeah, this is perfect. Yep, that's perfect. Oh, per wow. Yep, perfect bullseye. He, Just outside there. If he wants to, he could throw that 400 feet past that position. That's a touchy shot. It's, yeah. It's weirdly touchy. You're absolutely right. So Gannon has to go backhand, and this which is isn't a bad thing for him at all, but... Not the game plan that we saw in round two. Look at that kick. Someone just tossed it out of there. <laughs> he caught the top of that tree, I think. It was forced over. I mean, that's the mistake to make. I mean, in the end, it's the same result as his forehand drive. Tristan's got this one incredibly wide as well. Probably thinking the same thing. No reason for Tristan to test that out of bounds on the left. He's looking for a nice top 10 mm -hmm. finish here, and that would be fantastic for him. Obviously, the, the win is out of reach, so it's position golf for these two players. Eagle going is deep that a with a mid, mid range, I think. Is that a mid? The, uh, the amount of hyzer he threw on that lends me to think that it's a mid range. I don't but know. I, I don't know, but... Wouldn't doubt it. What, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't either. It's a long jump, but... Does he give this a little bit? Please don't. It's just too many hills around that green. If you hit metal. He might have been kind of running that a little bit. I, it's hard to tell if that was a pure layup or not. All's fine.
He's got Drew makes this. He's got a one stroke lead going into the last hole. Fate's in your hands. Anybody in the field, if you said you can have a one stroke lead going in the last hole, will yeah. take it every time on sure. the time for sure. And if you told me I could be one back, I would take that too every time. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm running on an average of 15 to 20 behind. <laughs> so one back sounds great. What a shot by Drew to keep yeah. this tournament going. I mean, you're right. If Drew doesn't park it, put it close, yeah. I mean, it's it's over. Mm -hmm. but to make par on 18, birdie in 18, not easy for anybody. But parring 18, not that bad. You could play to the mm -hmm. shortest landing zone, then chip the forehand up the right side, lay up, and you got a pretty easy four. Hardest gonna, hole on the course. It's the only one that averages over par. You got to think Drew is going second landing zone big. I th think Gannon did... He, did he play short? He laid up, yeah. He laid played up short, short in round two. And then he threw sidearm short right. Oh, yeah, he played up. it for par. Yes, yeah, so he's not used to this hole either. Okay. So Drew's going to be going with Halo Star Destroyer. Boosted. And, yeah, oh, man. Absolute no question about this. This is perfect. Oh, okay. The questions, but not... <laughs> can't believe that that almost went OB left. Looked so good. But I mean, when you throw it that, that far, just so far, it I just mean. pinches in. It's not the same landing zones that you or I are thinking about. That's in the drink. Yeah, that's not. Is it gonna? Uh, no. Oh, way farther than I thought. <laughs> Two step. 380. A mid range. Right? <laughs> yeah. Through the mid range. That was ridiculous. I wonder, what he, I wonder what he's trying to do there. Go if he just yanked that or either way. More important shot about to be thrown. Super oh, wide. No. It turned. This has got to move. Oh! Cart path. Unbelievable break. Oh, Cart path. Oh, God. <laughs> <gasps> it's two inches from it being over <laughs> for him right yeah, there. Yeah, he comes up inches shorter. He yeah, doesn't catch done. that skip. What? I mean, that's pretty much it right there. Honestly, I, he's got yeah. he's got a 250 foot approach. He's got a he has a fantastic opportunity to absolutely ice it. I'll say that yep, much. Absolutely. He just Heiser burn it in the hill and it's over. Yeah, if you he's play been, it low, and he's been putting so good. True. So Eagle taking it back. He is going to be trying to go for the green still. And this is turned over, maybe having a chance to Heiser back. But either Probably way. Probably a good break. I yeah. Think. And that's going to be a really tough last round for Eagle. He's going to drop back significant places. Tristan still an opportunity to maybe get in that top five potentially with a birdie here. And what a what an event for Tristan Tanner. Another solid showing here at Las Vegas. He can leave with his head held high. Kid works hard. Worked really hard in the offseason. He practices in the field, not just gameplay. Mm -hmm. Very nice tournament. But here it is. This is the tournament. If Burr can put this one close. You will be the champion. Oh, it looks nice. It looks perfect. That's it. Looks good. Yeah. No. 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 <gasps> oh, that's a huge mistake. I can't oh believe that got over the hill. God. I thought once it hit the side of the hill, he was golden. Got to hit the front of the hill. And Drew, look at that. No time wasted. He knows exactly what he has to do, and look at that. Buries it. So Gannon hits that for the playoff. It, well, yeah, I mean. Whoa. Gannon has what, 20? Less? Less. Yeah. Less, right it, at 20. It, 
It's close back there by that pine. I'm sad that I know that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's pretty it's pretty close in the hole for sure. That was so close to hanging on for him. It was an inch, it was an inch shorter yeah. of a lander yes. to winning the tournament. Yes. Right, right there. Game over. I'm sure Drew <sighs> thought the same thing. Yeah, it out of did. the hand it, it looked, looked perfect. Good. Yeah. But still gotta make this. Yep. It looks really close, but you're not standing there with the, all the pressure in the world on it. Delivers a good putt. More golf. I thought you guys said yesterday that I uh, was thinking there might be extra holes to be played today. You did say that. You said something. Yeah. Yeah, and the people at home can't say, oh, well, you were there watching. No, I said yeah, this Yeah, spoiler yesterday. alert. <laughs> <laughs> I said wow. this yesterday. That was one of the funnest rounds I've ever seen in my life. That front nine was back to back. Okay, one, three, five, seven, and eight, 17 and 18. Decker cards. Ace will be high, two is low. If by chance your team first on hole one and your team second on hole two, if there's a tie and it carries over, then it alternates to the next hole. So they just alternate. And I like that. I've never seen that before in a playoff. But what they're doing is that if you go second, you have a ton of advantage in the situation. Allows you to see an out of bounds or an early tree, adjust your game plan. Such a touchy shot that Drew throws here. Can he do it twice in a row? That's a laser beam, oh, man. That Missed is such a thing of beauty. Oh my gosh, go in the hole. That is so incredibly good. That's the best shot he threw all day. That's so touchy. Gannon has risen to the challenge every single time this entire event. Go. Going with the big forehand, he's calling for it to go. That's really good. And is who's closer? Before they teed off, I would say the advantage went to Gannon. Just because the sidearm hyzer play into there mm -hmm. is so forgiving. But Drew is away. Huge putt. Butter. Dude is locked in. Ooh, okay, Too it's nice. in. Nice. Oh, boy. Randy Moss catch there from the basket. That was a little left, but still a good stroke. But we are moving on to hole three. And like tournament director Jeff Chakwa said, they are alternating who goes first. So Gannon Burr on the tee. Just turning around immediately. Wow. Did he think did he, he hate it or did he love it? I think he d hated it. Maybe he thought he was OB long. Or maybe, yeah, he's still shaking his head as he walks away. I mean, he's got a, he's probably got 25 there. Not parked by any, by any means. Drew didn't throw the best shot in the first round. Okay. That's the best shot, though. Yeah, much better. Good adjustment. And they're putting it at that nervy 20, 21 <sighs> foot. Maybe even more. I mean, seems like more. Round one, this is a yeah. gimme, though. Especially for how good these two are putting. And that's 25. Yes. Center. Yeah. Nervy. Burr. Man's got ice water in his veins. Drew 
Andrew tees off first and putts first on hole one, and then Gannon tees off first and putts first on hole two. Birdie, birdie for both. Somehow slid like 100,000 feet on 18. I don't know how. I watched it, bro. I don't know. I don't know. It's not important now, but totally understand that frustration. Different disc for Drew. Probably smart not to go for the green. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, that would be a pretty awesome way to end it, though. Different. He might have went for the green anyway. That's he still far. He yeah. definitely laid off. That was wonderful. So again, going to stick with the same disc that he threw during the round, going with that mid-range M2. I wonder why he doesn't go forehand here. Backhand's too good. It's yeah. probably the problem. Yeah. Okay, two this turns, is two too turns. much. Ooh. Uh oh. Yeah, there's a certainly in range, but as we've seen, this green is treacherous. That's 340 to 350 feet away from that tree. How do you know? I need somebody else needed to know and <laughs> I helped him out. Now he's going with the forehand. Really no other options. Now, Drew up there, this needs to be close. And this looks pretty good. Oh, fantastic oh, shot. Yes. What a recovery. Wow. Awesome. So hard to throw it with that much speed from that far away and not crest that hill and get an extra 20 feet of roll. You know what's so impressive about Drew is the fact that he can throw it 9 million miles and then back off and throw the touchiest, softest shot into the green. Because if he could do that and his touch was questionable, he'd just be pretty good. Yes. Mm -hmm. But the fact that he's able to shorten these courses up and then have those type of approach and be able to throw those. Like what can you not do at that point? This should just be routine. Like one more brief moment. <laughs> Get in there. <laughs> not quite his normal stroke. It, I don't know. It's in. Birdie. But that's just so terrifying. And then the fact that he's starting to putt on an elite level. Starting to, I feel like. No, it's starting. I mean, he's been in this game a long, long time. Mm -hmm. Long time. This hole could end it so easily. The hole seven, this par four with the bunkers on both sides, tiny green to land on. Can Gannon stick this again? Put huge pressure on Drew. Eagle position if you're if you're up there inbounds past the green. Oh man. Just take it, take your time. Well, oh wide. no, don't put it up that wide. This is, it's sand. Yep. Okay. 35, but maybe. I think he's in the circle right there. Cause the flat, the, the little feather flags are about four Drew, feet outside the right side. Yeah, what is that in his hand? I think he's going short. He has to be. Wow, what a play. What a savvy veteran play. Safe. And, and what he's saying by that is for the next five, six minutes while we're walking up this fairway, you're going to be thinking about you're going to have to make that putt, Gannon. I don't think you can do it. Watch me. I'm going to play this short. And you're gonna watch how close I am under the basket. Well, he's got to do it first. This is still a touchy approach. <laughs> I've seen a lot of people mess this approach up. But he's this far enough that he can jump putt. Oh, that's a jumpy. Yee. Yeah, a little bit deep though, but 18 feet, maybe less. Pretty much just comes down to this. Yeah, it looks like he's just inside the circle here. Can he step up to the plate one more time? He's done it all week. Oh, 
hard to put into words what that feels like right there. Drew for the win. Just outside the bullseye, call it mm. 16 feet. Wow. One of the best battles you will ever see. These two players push themselves in a way we haven't seen in a long time. Incredible victory for Drew Gibson. This seems like Gannon's win to have all week. The way he played, the way he composed himself. Drew just wouldn't go away. And he made putts. And he threw drives. That's some of the best disc golf I've ever seen or played against, I think, in my career so far. To play against that level of competition from a 16-year-old kid is unbelievable. I mean, I played my butt off the last three rounds, almost threw a perfect shot on every hole I felt like and had to go into a four or five hole playoff just to win. So first off, that's the future of disc golf right there. I mean, that kid is gonna be a uh, force to reckon with now, next year, in 10 years. He's insane. He, the poise of the kid is unbelievable and he's a pleasure to play with. I mean, he's an overall great kid. Um, his mom's out here, his parents support him, so that's awesome. To battle the way I did this week and, and come back from 50th place to end up winning the event against you know the best players in the world feels really good. I finished last year on a really, really good note. You know, I had a chance of winning USDGC. I had a chance of winning the Pro Tour Finals. I was already on a pretty good trajectory, I felt like, with my game and the stuff I was working on. So I just didn't really have an off season. I played every single day, sometimes two or three times a day, just to try to keep that momentum rolling. And, you know, here we are. I just want to thank everybody who supports me. I know my dad's at home freaking out. Um, Matt for coming to hang out with me. I just want to thank everybody who uh, has been a part of my career mini, whether I stayed at your house, whether you said something encouraging to me. You know, infinite discs, EV7 putters, squatch bags, finish line discs. Thank you to everybody who makes this happen. Without everybody, there would be no me. So, thank you. Our 2022 Las Vegas champion, Drew Gibson. Kind of puts it into perspective. He's 100% right. Coming mm. off of the Pro Tour Finals with that close battle with Nathan Queen coming up short, making those crazy putts. I think Drew's the person to beat right now. Yeah, I mean, beautiful words said, too, about the guy that just barely came up short, Gannon Burt, the future of the game, the poise personality everything about it nothing but incredible sportsmanship there i mean that's the best a 16 year old has ever played yeah aside from maybe sam farron's winning worlds when he was 16 but that was back in yeah. the 80s things are changed but aside from that you might be put, right put it to you like this that last round there was six 13 under pars <laughs> on the board Ooh. that we just saw Ooh. the level is crazy Get ready for the best season of all time, guys. Thanks for all the support. Joe Mez checking out. We'll be back at Waco. Two weeks. See you then. Thank you to the Founders Club. Y'all awesome. I'm going to go putt. <laughs>